Hey guys, welcome to a quick Tuesday bonus video. Now we have our weekly video every Friday, but sometimes we have a bonus video on Tuesday. And today we're looking at something that I wanted to check out for a very long time. But I only recently got this 144 Hertz monitor. And I always wanted to know what happens if you use such a monitor with Windows 98. Apart from using high refresh rates, I also want to see how such modern monitors handle old school resolutions and aspect ratios. This monitor has a native resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels and hopefully we can get the 1600 by 1200 resolution going. This is kind of the 4K for retro games. Most older games support this resolution out of the box and look very nice and detailed. For this video I put together a test machine based on an ASRock motherboard. This one is for socket 775 but it's got an AGP slot so this is perfect for high performance Windows 98 retro gaming PC to really use fast AGP video cards without holding them back. The processor is a dual core Pentium running at 3.2 gigahertz. We got 512 megabytes of RAM and also SSD for Windows 98. Unfortunately, the monitor does not have VGA, so I couldn't test older graphics cards or a 3DFX Voodoo. So the only inputs that we can use are either DisplayPort 1.4 or HDMI 2.0. So I have this uh, DisplayPort to DVI adapter. Unfortunately, all I got was a black screen. I also tried uh, DisplayPort to DVI cable, which works on another machine, but with these old video cards, once again, all I got was a black screen. However, using a standard DVI to HDMI dongle worked just fine. So this is what you need to buy. So you obviously need a video card with DV DVI out and then a DVI to HDMI adapter. I tested a few video cards just to see what the compatibility is like and look, this could depend on the monitor, but testing some ATR Radeon and some Nvidia GeForce cards, the GeForce cards worked a lot better. So on all of these cards we have DVI outputs and on the Radeon uh, after installing the video driver you do get a picture but as soon as you uh, crank up the resolution and try high refresh rates uh, the screen just goes black whereas on the GeForce cards this worked just fine. So um, I only have one monitor but based on these tests if you try to build something uh, with high refresh rates in mind and the modern, modern monitor in the retro uh, forums for example it is known that the uh, early DVI implementations of the Radeon cards are not that good and can have compatibility issues so for such a project I recommend going with a GeForce uh, specifically something from the GeForce 4 Ti range or from the GeForce FX range. Let's quickly talk about display scaling. So by default the monitor will take the video signal and stretch it to fill the entire screen. However, the monitor has display scaling options built in. So on this monitor if we go to picture advanced and then go into display mode we've got three options. So full will stretch everything and fill the entire screen. Aspect will uh, preserve the aspect ratio with black bars on the side. Both full and aspect will give you a slightly softer image. And then we have one by one, which will give you a one by one pixel mapped screen. So here we're getting nice sharp pixels, but black borders all around. So at 1024 by 768, this is, I would say, too small. Um, it is nice and sharp, but it's definitely too small. However, if we change the resolution to 1600 by 1200, this actually looks, doesn't look too bad. So we will lose um, some space at the top and the bottom. But if you sit a little bit closer to your monitor, uh, this looks really sharp and uh, clear. So next, let's have a look at what refresh rates we get at which resolutions. 
The highest refresh rate you can configure depends on the resolution. So let's start with a few retro resolutions. 1024 by 768 is really popular. So you go to advanced and then to adapter and we have a few choices here. So the highest it can go up to is 144 hertz and that is really nice and responsive. And I played a few games and the difference is definitely a huge improvement compared to playing at 60 hertz. But there are also some uh, in-betweens uh, if you don't want to go that high, but really um, if, you, if your monitor supports 144 hertz, you might as well go that high. So let's have a look at some higher resolutions. The next interesting one is 1280 by 960. Uh, first I have to apply the resolution, hang on. 1280 by 960, let's apply the resolution. It just uh, takes a moment, there you go. And let's have a look at which refresh rates we can change. So here we can go up to 120, so not 144 anymore, up to 120, which is still very fast. 1280 by, uh, 1280 by 1024 is the next one. Let's try this resolution. Also a lot of games support this resolution by default. The aspect ratio is 5 by 4, that's why it's a little bit of an oddball um, setting, but most games do support it. Again, we can go up to 120 hertz, and there's one more, the re uh, 4K of the retro world, 1600 by 1200. Let's test this one, let's see how far we can push it. So we click on uh, advanced and adapter it goes up to 85 hertz. So no 120, no 144 hertz, only 85. And the reason for that is because these graphics cards use what's called single uh, link uh, DVI and the bandwidth is limited and 1600 by 1200 at 85 hertz is the best you can do. Something else I noticed, and we can see this really good when we run the GL Quake benchmark, we're getting 144 FPS. I've enabled VSync, so in the benchmark we're getting 144 FPS, but as soon as you play the game, um, you get a FPS cap basically. It will limit the frames per second that you can achieve, and I found this in a lot of, in a lot of games. Quake 2 has the same issue, Half-Life as well, expendable, so uh, although you can use a high refresh monitor just fine, it seems that a lot of games or game engines from back in the day don't actually support such high refresh rates. Here we're running 3D Mark 2000 at 1600 by 1200. Also VSync is engaged, so we're getting a locked frame rate of 85 FPS and playing games at this resolution and with VSync enabled, um, it's really a great experience. Now, I know that a lot of you out there, uh, you read about it quite often that VSync uh, causes input lag and that is correct, but for some reason with Windows 98, I believe the input lag might be a little bit less compared to like modern operating systems and modern uh, games. Those engines might have a, a higher overhead or something like that. Also, the higher the refresh rate, the lower the input lag when VSync is enabled. And just going from 60 to 75 or 85 hertz, you will straight away see a uh, much lower input lag. So despite having VSync enabled, uh, the experience is really fast and responsive. Definitely an upgrade compared to playing at 60 hertz. So basically we can see that you can take a modern monitor that you buy in 2019 and it will work just fine with Windows 98. It even picked up, for example, the name of the monitor. It auto detects all the supported resolutions and the refresh rates. So that works really well. Unfortunately, because the old graphics cards only have single link uh, DVI, we don't get higher support than 1600 by 1200 with 85 hertz. It is still an improvement over playing on a 60 hertz monitor. And if you play at 20, uh, 1024 by 768, you will get the 144 hertz. Uh, unfortunately, this monitor doesn't have VGA, so that's a function I couldn't uh, test. I also noticed that even in games like MDK2, which don't seem too demanding, um, the GeForce 4 struggled to get 144 hertz at 1024 by 768. So um, you might have to look at a GeForce FX 
um, like a 5900 XT or an, an ultra version or something like that to um, have enough GPU or horsepower to deliver 144 FPS in some of the more demanding games. We also found that a lot of games have FPS caps built in. Um, some games you can uh, remove that. PC Gaming Wiki is a good website. Uh, it might have some hints for various game engines. And that's pretty much all that there is to it. So it's nice to see that you can pick up a modern monitor, plug it into a Windows 98 retro gaming PC, and everything works pretty much as expected. As always, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I will see you next week with our weekly Friday video. But keep an eye out for Tuesday. Sometimes there will be a bonus video like this one. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.